So you recently released a paper, right? An inflammatory clock predicts multimorbidity, immunosenescence, and cardiovascular aging in humans. Uh, so can you talk about how that clock was developed? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so about 15 years ago, we decided to uh, initiate a program at Stanford called 1000 Immunomes Program uh, Study, where we recruited a thousand individuals. And the idea was samples will come in a facility that has multiple technologies to deconstruct a human blood sample into hundreds of thousands of components. And then the premise was we were to uh, going to be uh, using AI and machine learning to learn from this and derive uh, biomarkers and hopefully therapeutics for uh, aging, uh, immunity mediated aging, if you will, and systemic chronic inflammation specifically. So what happens is we measure uh, gene expression, cellular phenotypes, uh, about a number of um, serum protein biomarkers from the immune system. And we decided to treat the data in different ways um, in order to, for us to have the best prediction of age and multimorbidity. That was the major endpoint we wanted to get at. So we took the uh, serum proteins, which were the most informative across uh, different data types. And um, we used a deep neural network, a type of nonlinear approximation uh, to the data in order to predict the age of a person. And so that was the best method that really enabled us to have an accurate prediction of age. And once we adjusted for age, uh, we were able to predict multimorbidity. And um, that's how the inflammatory clock was conceived and created based on serum protein uh, levels of the immune system and a deep neural network on top of that, that spits a basically a predicted age in your immunological inflammatory space. Right. And you trained it on age. So it, it was, yeah. So, so you, you, it, you trained it to determine the person's age. Is that uh, it, it's a little more complicated than that. Um, what we, uh, what we call guided autoencoder where mm -hmm. you're, and this is guided because you're trying to predict and reconstruct the same cytokine levels. So you enter cytokines, you spit out cytokines, predicted cytokines. And so that is the way that we're improving the error uh, in the prediction. So reducing the, 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 the loss, the, the function, the, 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 the reducing the error or improving the accuracy. And at the same time in the loss function, we include uh, age as a target variable. So we're training um, to predict age and in parallel, reconstruct the inflammatory uh, cytokine data. Right. Okay. So have, have you looked at how it predicts outcomes? So I think you looked at uh, like frailty and uh, multimorbidity. Have you kind of looked right. at those? Yes, exactly. So in the aging space, you, you, you know well that uh, the issue of multimorbidity is uh, number one, you know, top priority for everybody. Uh, uh, it was declared a priority research in the healthcare space in 2018. I think it's, a, it's major because of many things. There's, mm. there's issues uh, across the board. Uh, it takes a long time uh, for um, medical staff to take care of uh, multi-morbid uh, people. Uh, there's aggravation of one symptom and one disease over the other. There's the issue of polypharmacy and so on and so forth. So we wanted to tackle multi-morbidity. And so once we have that clock or the predicted age, we use it to predict multi-morbidity in the elderly. Um, and we're actually doing pretty well at predicting uh, multiple diseases. And these are just... Uh, 
you know, diseases that go with age, right? Mm. A, a, a cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative disorders, respiratory issues, and so on and so forth, up to, up to 10 diseases. And then we went on and thought about the possibility that we are clock could uh, predict other outcomes like, like, like the one that you mentioned, frailty. So we took data from 2010, 2010, and we measured the frailty index, which is a number of, uh, is a composite index of a number of uh, testing procedures that we did in those individuals, uh, including time up and go, which is a functional assay, and a, and a survey that talks about autonomy and independence. And we're able seven years in advance to predict this frailty score of these older individuals in a, in a, with high accuracy. Uh, we also predict cardiovascular aging um, in, in healthy individuals. So people that may have never uh, been you know, tested for, for uh, risk factors or cardiovascular aging, we're able to pick up those in a validation cohort of about 150 people. Right. So you also talked about immunosenescence. So, so first of all, kind of what is immunosenescence? And um, does it, it also predicts for kind of, I guess, the state of your immune system? Yeah, that's exactly right. So immunosenescence is a concept that clinically means uh, as you're getting older, you have high chance of getting an infection, of have a poor outcome to that infection, and also the responses to vaccinations are going down. That's the what the clinical definition of immunosenescence. What happens uh, in the immune system is you see a shift in cellular proportions. You see a decline in many signaling pathways and responses to those path in, in those pathways, and you see obviously inflammation. Um, and so, what we uh, decided to do is to take the cellular component of the blood of these thousand individuals and stimulate them. Um, it, much like you would do with a, with a virus or, uh, or, or a bacteria infection. So we, we're stimulating those cells with a number of stimuli and we're measuring the responses in an in vitro assay. This is ex vivo. And so uh, the higher the eye inflammatory age of individuals of the same age, chronological age, right? mm -hmm. uh, the lower the responses to all these different stimuli in the uh, cellular proportion of the blood. And we're talking about uh, cells that have been stimulated uh, for a certain period of time, constituting the innate immune system. Mm -hmm. uh, so monocytes, uh, NK cells, and all those uh, innate immune systems, but also the adaptive immune system. And where we see the major effect is in the adaptive immune system with CD8 T cells, the antiviral response, with CD4 T cells uh, that also help CD8 to fight infections and cancer, and in, in, in B cells, which produce antibodies. So, yeah. Uh, effectively, with higher IH, we can predict lower immune responses in these uh, ex vivo assays. Okay, and, and worse response to vaccination, I assume. Um, in the response to vaccination, we looked into uh, the flu vaccine, and I can tell you that only that applies, that's true, but only for novel antigens, not for uh, prior uh, exposures. Um, if you were to for example, if there's cross-reactivity of a vaccine that you receive in 2000, uh, those responses will be preserved. Uh, we have yet to understand uh, why. Uh, my guess is you have developed memory and those cells sit in the bone marrow producing plasma uh, 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 antibodies. And maybe it's, uh, it's more difficult to access those and change their, uh, their behavior. Right. So uh, did, did you ever, did you look at the age that the uh, eye age clock came up with and compare it to like one of the epigenetic clocks, like a Horvath clock, or do you know is, if there is any correlation between these two? Um, we haven't done that, believe it or not. Okay. We haven't got that uh, okay. uh, 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 yet. Uh, we're doing a number of studies where we're comparing clocks. Um, my... Uh, my uh, assumption is that they will correlate uh, because they're highly collinear, uh, mm -hmm. because they're both fit on age. 
Uh, but uh, what, what we can really get from the epigenetic Harvard clock is almost a perfect uh, prediction of age. So there's not much room for biological variation there. Mm. Um, so I don't know in terms of uh, the prediction of age, the Horvath clock may do much better. Uh, we, the inflammatory age uh, is not really a clock, is the measure, is the metric um, that tells you about the inflammatory burden of an individual. Right. Yes. And, and yes, and that sounds more useful than actually than being able to predict my chronological age, because I know that. Right. <laughs>